I have the Removu K1, and we're gonna see if this gimbal camera combo is a good camera to get. So I'm actually really surprised by this camera. I took it to Vietnam with me, traveled around. I've been shooting off and on with it for a while now, and I just wanted to get a feel for how this camera performs and if it's a good camera to use. Now, I think this camera definitely sits in like the class of vlogging cameras because you have a nice stabilized camera. It's got a gimbal on it. It's got a screen. It's got a little microphone attachment and it's very easy to use. So it's something that you could kind of have on you at all times, pick up and go. And it feels pretty sturdy. So I've been throwing this in my bag with no protection. I've been just throwing it in like the top or wherever. And as we've been traveling, it's been getting bumped, it's been getting hit, and I haven't damaged it yet. Now before we get into some of the footage, let's just talk about this camera in general and what it has to offer. So this camera is 4K, it shoots 12 megapixel stills, it's got an aperture 2.8 lens, it's got slow motion features, it's got a three axis gimbal on the top, and it's got a place for an attachable microphone. It's got a trigger on the front that changes the mode, it's got a menu button, it's got a button for taking videos, a button for taking stills, and it's got your joystick which controls the camera and also flips through the menu settings. There's not a ton of extra buttons on this gimbal which is one of the reasons I really like it. It just works, you turn it on and you get going right away. One thing I do love is that it has a QC sticker on the side, so I know that it was quality controlled. Another cool feature of the K1 is it's got two different types of locks. It's got one that locks the pan feature, and then the other one here, you just click the camera into place and it's locked. And as you move it around, the camera does not move. It's also got this cover, which makes it really easy. It's just a little plastic cover, but it keeps your lens nice and clean so you never get scratches or anything because it's pretty durable. And it's got a removable battery so you can bring extra batteries along. It's also got a nice little base that this sits into so that you can charge it standing up. You don't have to stick it on the gimbal. Or you could just charge it right here using the port in the front. So all in all, this gimbal has everything you need to get up and running to shoot some cool footage and stills. Now let's go see how this camera performs. So we're gonna go out, I'm gonna do a little vlogging and I'm gonna show you how this compares to something like this. This is just my GoPro on a stick. In terms of size, it's about the same, so it's a good way to kind of determine how this camera performs against something, say, a GoPro. They have similar lenses in terms of the width, and they have similar functionalities, except for obviously this one is a gimbal, so you're gonna get smoother footage than just with a GoPro. But I thought this would be a good comparison because if I was out shooting a vlog and I was just bringing along a camera of this size, I would be deciding between the K1 or say something like the GoPro on a stick, which I've done a ton of vlogs like this way before this thing came out. And you can definitely vlog on a camera of this size and still get awesome footage for vlogs. Also in terms of the footage, both of these are shooting 4K and they both shoot 120 slow-mo. So we're gonna see how that looks. And then I wanna compare audio, just so you have something to compare the Removo against. The Removo. The Removo? Don't really know how to say it. The Removo K1. All right, let's go. All right, so we are outside. It's nice today, it's a beautiful day. I usually go down to the water to do these kind of reviews, but I decided to walk around uh, the streets. Check it out here. So we are just in Santa Monica. You can see all the nice palm trees. All right. Wonder, it's a little slow to follow me, but I wonder if I speed up the settings. Let me try this. Okay, so now I've sped it up. Let's see. Definitely is much faster. So that's one thing. There's definitely some options to change the settings within your gimbal. You get to tweak them to fit whatever you're using. I have the microphone plugged in, so I'm using that microphone. And I'm in a pretty high contrast scene. So that's one of the things I wanted to show you guys is how the footage compares. Now, one of the really cool things about vlogging on this camera is that you have a screen that you can actually see yourself. So you know if you got your, the right shot, whereas if you're using something else, a lot of times you don't have the screen. Say if you're using like a GoPro or something, you definitely can't see yourself. So that's one huge bonus here. Okay, so now I'm on the GoPro, just to kind of show you guys a quick difference between holding a selfie stick out with the GoPro and vlogging on the Removo. So obviously you don't have a screen, you don't have the microphone that comes with it, you just have the GoPro, but still you can see the difference. 
Now I'm shooting 4K and both of these, the issue with the GoPro is you do have that wide kind of bubble look. You don't get that with the Removu because it actually has software that corrects it in, in camera with the lens. And they've actually updated the software recently so that it gets rid of the issue where it made your face really skinny in the middle. So they've updated that, which I think that was really important that they did that because I saw a lot of footage before that had kind of this weird center that was like slim on the Removu. Okay, so now I've got both cameras on so you can see the screen of what it is I'm recording. Now one of the weird things is, say, here's my left hand. If I show it up on the screen, it shows up as your right hand. Uh, it doesn't mirror the screen, and that's one issue for me in terms of vlogging. If you want to use your left hand, on the screen it's right. So when it comes to vlogging, you kind of can only use this to center yourself up and make sure that you know you have a shot, but you just can't rely on it too much because there's gonna be a lot of issues if you try to, you kind of get messed up on your directions left and right. It's a quick software fix and I really hope they do fix that because it would make this so much better just giving the ability to mirror the screen. Okay, so I'm completely using the auto settings right now. You can fine tune it, you can change the white balance, you can change your exposure value and things like that in camera. So there's a little, ability to tweak your settings but all in all you're basically at the will of the camera you don't have a ton of settings but it's enough if you're just doing vlogs all right so after playing around with this camera and comparing it side by side to the gopro there are definitely some few advantages in comparison to this camera and disadvantages. One disadvantage is just that this camera does not shoot raw photos. So if you're trying to do photography with this camera, you're not gonna get the best photos. You're not gonna have a lot of room to edit them in post. This is definitely more of a video camera and it's more of a vlogging style camera. The one issue with vlogging is the mirrored screen. They just need to fix that mirrored screen and then it would make it so much easier to shoot yourself. It doesn't have to record mirrored, it just needs to play back mirrored so that when you raise your left hand on the screen, it shows the left hand and it's not opposite so you're not dodging back and forth trying to get the center frame properly. Other than that, the audio is decent, it works. It's not the best in the world, but it will get you your footage and it's better than say the GoPro which has the mics on the camera itself so that anytime you touch any Anything on the camera you hear it and also this has you know a nice little dead cat on it so so you don't get a ton of the wind sounds and you, you you get decent sound when I was out in Vietnam I was using this with the microphone on here and I definitely used sections of that in my vlogs from Vietnam now they obviously aren't as good as say my GH5 with my microphone however they are usable at those times where I just needed to grab a few shots and I didn't want to pull out my bigger camera going to the Colombian bridge Ah, yes, we wanted to do this. This is on my list. All in all, my thoughts on this Removu K1 is that I think it's a great beginner vlogger camera. If you're getting into vlogging, if you're getting into shooting content, this is like pick up and go. You'll be able to get good footage, just leave it on the auto settings, and you'll get some decent stuff that's ready to start cutting. Because the most important thing when you're shooting any piece of content is that you're telling a story, and this can definitely help you tell a story because you can get footage, you can get decent audio, and you can tell your story. And so if you're using other cameras, you might struggle a little bit, you might try to add on stuff, this, you just get decent audio, you get a decent image, and it keeps it stabilized here, and your footage is gonna look that much more professional and better when you're using, say, this camera, because you have stable, silky smooth footage, which looks great in vlogs. When you're talking to the camera, it's not shaking all over the place. People aren't gonna be saying things like, why is your camera so shaky? You're not gonna be so worried about stabilizing your footage using other methods. For me personally, I don't know how often I'm gonna end up using this camera. Like I said, I brought it to Vietnam and I ended up using it in situations where I didn't wanna pull out a bigger camera. This was great in like busy areas in Hanoi when I was told by the guide to put our cameras away because of the theft in the city. People will just ride by on a motorbike and grab a camera out of your hands. So this was much easier to pull out and get good shots and not have to worry so much about having bigger gear. Also, this is small enough that you can just throw it in your pocket. I had it sitting in my back pocket all the time. So there's definitely times when I feel like I will use this and I will take it with me because it's easy, it's compact, it will get a decent image. It's not the best thing in the world. It's definitely a tool to tell a story. It's not a tool to get cinematic, awesome footage. 
And there's a difference there. If you're looking for something that's gonna get you awesome footage, you're gonna need to have more control over your image, more ability to do some color grading, more options to add lenses and different elements to it. This is just a wide lens, which is perfect for vlogging. It's perfect for telling your story, no matter what it is that you're doing. So for those of you that are interested in vlogging, those of you who are newer to filmmaking in general, I say this is a great choice. You can get some awesome footage with this. You'll be able to do a lot with this little camera. Now, for those of you who are using bigger cameras and you're just thinking about maybe this would be good for, say, getting some stable footage, I would say look at some other options. If you're shooting on like a point and shoot, if you're shooting on a mirrorless, if you're shooting on something like a DSLR, definitely consider looking at gimbals for that camera that are gonna be around the same price as this because you'll get better footage in the long run than you would if you just got one of these to try to be on the side. Now, if you're looking for a camera that's non-intrusive and something that you just kind of throw in your pocket or the top of your bag, definitely a good choice. So it all comes down to what it is that you're shooting and the situations that you're gonna be in. And the last thing I wanna cover is this compared to say the Osmo. Now I've definitely worked with the Osmo in different situations and my biggest hang up with that is that you have a monitor off to the side. So you have your phone like this and I just, that's annoying to me and it's big and it's bulky and the Wi-Fi doesn't necessarily work all the time or the Bluetooth or however it connects. I personally would rather use this than an Osmo. Now you might get better footage with the Osmo because the camera's a little bit better. However, as a whole, I think it's more of a pain to use. I would much rather use this. It's an all-in-one package that's pretty small. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful in giving you some information about this camera. I think it's a good choice depending on your situation. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think about this footage in the comments below. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's a lot of awesome content on this channel. I got other reviews, some filmmaking tutorials. Also, come find me on Instagram at Jevendovi. Guys, I'll see you on the next one.